Welcome back. Welcome back to a, hmm, we won't say hot ATL for a while. We'll just say a little cooler ATL. <laughs> Atlanta is experiencing a little cold weather, but compared to what you are going through, a lot of you, I will never, ever, ever complain again. I just hope that you can just stay safe, uh, stay warm, stay together, and hopefully this too shall pass soon and we're just believing that you will uh, be fine and that we'll get through this cold weather never will i say that again <laughs> and i'm so sorry but even at that it's good to know that hey you came back to check on jack check on me at jay's knitting pearl jam and it was even funny um uh, my friend Terry, Terry in Tennessee, we were even exchanging recipes. <laughs> she typed me and said, um, she messaged me and said that she had fixed a beautiful um, pot roast, uh, some type of roast, uh, pot roast for the uh, weekend. And then what was left, she made some soup and she was telling me how great it was. And I simply told her, well, and um, she, they're much colder than what we are down here. And I told her, well, I'm doing chili and uh, chili and some cornbread <laughs> so you see you can find even a little little excitement even in maybe this cold weather so kudos to you Terry in Tennessee and of course like you say I'm just happy that you're back I'm happy I hope you're safe and we're here at Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam I've been busy it's been, it's, like I said, it's been cool compared to cold where you are maybe, but I try to keep busy. I've got a um, couple of things to show you and I have a great tutorial I think you'll like. So let's get started with what's new at Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. Well, uh, didn't go out much. So guess what? I didn't spend much money. It's amazing. If you don't go to the store, you have money in the bank. <laughs> So, I finally got a chance to go out uh, today, but uh, I thank goodness I had stocked up, you know, when they first said it was going to, the weather was going to turn pretty cold, so I was fine, and I just kind of used things out of my freezer and out of my pantry, so that was great. But when I did go out before the storm, uh, let me just give my little shout outs real quick. I don't have much this time because, like I said, hadn't been out. That's amazing how much you don't spend if you don't go out <laughs> but I was at Hancock's and this beautiful beautiful um, lady uh, her name is Karen and uh, she was um, standing at Hancock Fabrics we were in the checkout line I had noticed her in the store because she had on this beautiful uh, it was you can't ever you can't really you have to just really say it, it was orange it was it was just a beautiful striking color with a beautiful uh, orange scarf around her neck and she had some yarn and I had some yarn so naturally we start talking like oh what are you making and she asked me and uh, she's a lady that does beautiful lace knitting so she's an experienced knitter shawls I just thought that was so wonderful Karen it was so nice to meet you I hope we get to see each other again. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I'm always excited to meet an experienced knitter. Uh, a knitter who, uh, who's, you know, who gets out there and, and just gets those uh, very beautiful lace style patterns. So it was nice to meet you. And I just wanted to let you know that here at Jay's Knit and Burrow Jam, I hope you found me so that you can get this little shout out and know how much, how exciting it was. And then I was at Joanne's, and I ran into a mother, and her name is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> and Debbie uh, is a knitter, and she's knitting, uh, she loves knitting uh, cowls for your neck, neck warmers, and she loves knitting beautiful scarves. So it was so nice to meet her. And I think she was saying that she likes baby blankets too. I don't know if she crocheted those. She may. I think she was. I think she's a knitter and a crocheter. 
And so I wanted to let Debbie know about Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. And I hope she found me. And I hope she's going to join us. And hopefully sure we'll run into each other again at, at Joanne's. But what was so exciting? She had a daughter with her. Madeline. <laughs> Madeline was so sweet and so nice. And of course she's into those, what do you call those things? Those rainbow loom, the little uh, bracelets. And so she was wearing a cute uh, rainbow uh, uh, ring. And then she had on the loom bracelet to match. Oh, Madeline, you're just a little designer. What else can I say? <laughs> but it was so nice meeting you both. And like I say, I hope, uh, Debbie, that you're going to follow me, tell your friends about me, hope we can see each other again, uh, run into each other at the next Joanne sale. You can always find me. I'll always be back in the knitting department. Look, with my, look smiling big because I'm, I'm in my happy place with yarn and a sale and coupons. So you'll always know it's me. And then I always have my glasses on top of my head. I don't know why I bothered even wear them. But anyway, so that's how you'll always know me. So, good to meet you all. And so, like I said, this is going to be kind of a short uh, little segment because, like I said, it's been so cold and I've been working up a storm. And so I have two new tops to show you. Well, the first one I'm wearing. This is, now I'm going to see if the camera, if I can stand it. I don't know if I need to come and move the camera or not. But this is a cute kind of a, it's a vest. It's made out of uh, Vanna. I have a beautiful lace front. Look, has beautiful there's beautiful buttons. You can button it. You see that? I won't go all the way down. But look, what I also added was, you know that yarn. <laughs> but now watch. Here's a surprise for you. Now, if you remember uh, us doing, if you were one of the people that went to my uh, Love Knot uh, crocheted uh, vest, autumn vest, and you know... Um, I did it in one piece and I said now be sure to write down different numbers and different measurements and and get this in mind because we're going to use it over and over okay it's not the love knot but watch this I'm gonna turn slowly to the back Ta -da! we have and I put this light color underneath so that you can see if you can see there's one pattern on the back like we did in the love knot it's done in that's the back square and then we add the two front squares and it's a different pattern in the front I don't know if that's showing up but I'm just going right ahead and then I use that you know that yarn as a beautiful trim that you can just simply tie that cute Look. Oh, and guess what? Look, I think it made me look a little thinner. Look, let me hold in a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. Hey! <laughs> what do you think? Is that cute? I just kind of was working on it. And of course, I wanted to get this ready before Valentine's, but um, because you see, it's, it's done in Vanna's Cranberry Red. And I just wanted to practice. I, I didn't know if it was going to come out right or not. I just wanted to practice. So I thought, well, I'll just use that cranberry, you know, uh, to use it up. And lo and behold, it came out. It worked. So we will have a tutorial on down the road. In I don't know what I'm going to call this one yet. But I'm going to think of a really cute name. Man, look at that. Look at that. I love that. One piece, people. One piece. Okay. And with the magic of the YouTube, let me show you what else I have. Okay. Well, as you know, Judy and I, we knit at the mall. 
So, you know, you really don't want to be in the mall knitting with a coat on or, uh, you know, heavy, a heavy poncho or something. So, I'm always thinking of something that you can put on to just keep that air off. The air always seems to blow down on us. And uh, I came up with, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. I think I'm going to call it Jay's Walk in the Mall Poncho or Wrap. I don't know. Hadn't decided yet. But... Let's take a look and let me share it with you. Okay, it's just a simple, it's crocheted. It's done in one piece. It has a beautiful lace and this yarn, which I'm gonna tell you all about it, has a beautiful weight, it's just right. And as you can see, I can put my little signature cassage on it if I want to. Of course, I can take that off and just simply wear it with that yarn. <laughs> Look, and just open it up. Open all that little yarn up. Well, now, what do you think of this? How pretty is this? It's lacy, it's simple. Most patterns I see, they do it in two pieces and then you sew up the, the sides. Well, that can get complicated if, uh, you know, if they don't come out right or the pattern is hard to sew. But this is one piece. We'll start in the front, go, leave it. I'm gonna show you how I left the opening for the neck for your head to slide over. And then you'll come out and end on the back. And this particular pattern has its on, its on side uh, border. So there's no border to add and it ends on a pretty lace. So you don't have to do anything extra once you're in, front and back. It's a beautiful two row crochet pattern that I think you'll enjoy. So I'm gonna give you a tutorial. And then you can start walking in the mall too. What do you think of this? I really like it. And if you want to just do a little something different, you can turn it. Now I'm not in front of the mirror, so I can't tell. But you can kind of swivel it to the bias and have it so that it drapes more like a point. But you know, I'm so short and I really hate to have that point in the back what I'm trying to hide to have a have a point <laughs> so but yes yeah, you can just kind of rotate it just a little bit and put it off and uh, off the shoulder more like I say it's a fun crochet you will enjoy it it's done in one piece when you're done you're done you just simply put it on you don't have to worry about it. there's really no blocking to do or anything you just Get done, tie, uh, weave in your little, all your tails, and there won't be that many tails. And you can put it on. And go to the mall and walk. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you there. <laughs> well, so, this is Jay's project for you, my friends at the YouTube. So, there's nothing else to do but... Let's crochet. Enjoy. So now I thought we'd go ahead and get started on our tutorial. Uh, like I said, I guess I'm going to call it Jay's Crochet Mall Shawl. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Jay's Crochet Mall Shawl. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Look, people. <laughs> Oh, look, I just do this. I can't think of names. Okay, so, uh, but this is, I was trying to lay out some of the lace parts so that you can see it. And uh, we're going to be working in clusters, just simply clusters and chains. And we're going to put them together in such a way. Now, I know uh, on the camera, when I look through the camera, this looks blue, but this is really, I'm going to go over the yarn and everything. Um but it's really a deep uh, grape, purple grape, 
purple color. So anyway, I want you to see it. Like I said, it's dark, so uh, that's why I tried to take some pictures uh, up front so that you can uh, really get an uh, eye view of it. Okay, so let me put this aside. And then let's, let's go over what you're going to need for this project. First of all, we will need some yarn. And I'm going to use for this, the original one is, we're going back to Lions Brand, Heartland. And the name of this color is Hot Springs. Lion Brand's Heartland Hot Springs. And it's the pretty grape, deep purple color. Look, seems like there's a little hint of black, little, you know, it has a little, little something in there. It's not just a complete solid. Okay, so that's, and it calls for a J hook, but you know, I, I love J's anyway. So I'm using, I tried out this new boy uh, J hook that has a nice uh, cushion for the handle. And it seems to work pretty well. So I thought I'd give it a try for this uh, project. Okay. So that's two things out of the way. Yarn and crochet hook. Now, let's talk about the pattern. Well, you know I love stitch books. So I went through and I started looking. You know, I've got a lot, so it's hard to always pick out something. But I'm always looking for certain things when I pick out a pattern, especially if you're gonna try to share the pattern or explain the pattern and work the pattern. So I pulled out this book. I had it a long time and I hadn't used anything out of it. It's by one of my favorites, Darla Sims. Let's see if that's glaring. It says 108 crochet clusters. These are cluster stitches by Darla Sims. Okay, so I just start flipping through. It's a pretty good book. Um, some of the pictures are in color and some are not. I don't, you know, it's not, it's not one of her favorite, it's not my favorite of hers. I've got one that I really, that's been out for years. The 280 crochet shell patterns. This is my favorite book. This is the book that I've taken so many projects out of. Love this book. If you see it, you need to grab it. Um, you know, especially when you go through those uh, bookstore book uh, sites where you can get some uh, books that uh, you can't find at uh, some of the big box stores anymore. So you need to grab it up. You won't waste your money. You will love having it. That's my favorite of her books. But like I said, this was one that I had. I have a lot of her books. And so I started looking through, and like I said, there's a lot. I mean, there's so many. How do you choose? And I had started to do nostalgia, and then I changed my mind. A lot of times, it's just trial and error. I'll actually work up a sample, a small sample, just like I work up for you. And I look at it and see how it looks, see how easy it is to explain or, or you know, whatever I need for it to do. And if it doesn't, look. Pull it out, find another pattern, start again. So, I wind up with number 94 of her book called Tilting Twins. And I liked it because, well, there's only three rows. Uh, and the pattern repeat is only row two and three. So, once we, once we get past row one, then all we have to do is repeat row two, row three, row two, row three, and continue. And uh, pattern uh, is not uh, too long because it's a chain of a multiple of nine plus two. Nine, a chain a multiple of nine plus two, which isn't bad. When you get into 14s and 18s and 20, then you know you're going to have a lot of yarn. And, and so I didn't want to go through all that. So, so far, uh, number 94, Tilting Twins, and my pattern is by Darla Sims, Crochet Clusters. So, if you have this book, you can pull it out and follow it along that way. Um, 
as I said, I'm going to use the stitch and then, you know, create my own. Like I said, they give you the stitch, but we're going to create our own design from that stitch. So, we have our yarn. We, I have a black and white. Don't forget to make your black and white because we need to mark things down. We've got a lot going on on this pattern. And we're going to get started with Jay's Crochet Mall Shawl. <laughs> you're gonna enjoy it now to get started like I say this is uh, a foundation row row number one and then we simply uh, go to row two and three and just keep repeating those all right what I need for you to do is simply to make a long chain and I guess you notice that Every pattern I try to find, I try not to have to start with a row of single crochets. Now, sometimes we're just going to have to, but it's, yeah, you know, I have problems with focusing on my eyes. My eyes are dry. So anytime I can do something where I don't have to sit and count each chain uh, for the project, it helps me. And then, of course, it helps me to share it with you. So I always use like your waist measurement. That's just to get you to chain a long chain and don't. You know, don't be scared and chain a little chain and then you realize, oh, I need more than that. So I just always chain a long chain so that we can get started. Of course, this is just some sample uh, yarn. So now on row one, and I'm going to try to really go slow and just make this real clear. I, I hope to get better since crocheting, like I said, it, you know, sometimes instructions are so hard to, uh, to repeat and to share. But this is pretty simple. All right, so I have a long chain, and of course, you're going to do a longer one. Do a much longer one, unless you're going to do it on sample yarn, just to have it, and then you then you can try it on your real yarn. Okay, row one will be the wrong side. I'm using my J crochet hook, and I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So I just go to my single second chain from the hook, and I do a single crochet. Now, I'm simply going to chain three. One, two, three. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to skip two chains. One, two, and in the third chain, I'm going to do a single crochet. Chain three. One, two, and three. Skip two uh, chains on the bottom. One, two. In the third chain, do a single crochet. Chain three. One, two, and three. Skip two, single crochet in the next chain. Chain three. One, two, and three. Okay, now you see we're making these loops. All right, skip two on the bottom, single crochet in the next one. Single crochet, now chain three. One, two, and three. Okay, and continue. Skip two, single crochet in the third one. Now chain three. One, two, and three. And now we're just on a roll. Okay. Now, this, um, these loops that we're making, I tried to come up with a way to uh, represent a size. All right, you see each one of these loops, okay? And I figured with with the math that I did, I came up with the idea that if you would do 30, if you're a small size, say if you're small to medium built, small to medium, you're going to continue until you have at least 36 loops. You see these loops? Hope they're showing up. I'm, I have to open them up. Can you see the loops that we uh, that I'm making right now? You're going to continue until you have 36. I'm more medium. I'm more uh, large to extra large. So I'm going to have 45 of these loops. I'm just going to keep going. That's why you need this long chain. Not a little simple chain, but a long chain. <laughs> so I'm going to continue until I have 45 loops. This, is, this pattern is a multiple of 9 chain plus 2. And so each one of these numbers, each one of these numbers are divisible by 9. 
that's how you find so 36 is divisible by 9 so from small to medium uh, now I'm me, uh, large to extra large I'm gonna have 45 if you're tall or either just larger and you need uh, more then the next nine next number up divisible by 9 is 54 so 36 45 54 loops in your chain so that's how you'll know so I'm just going to continue skip two on the bottom I've already chained three now single crochet in the next chain chain three one two and three skip two one two single crochet and you will just continue one two three okay skip two then single crochet and you're gonna repeat all the way across until you have the right amount of loops that I just gave you 36 I'm using 45 if you're taller or larger you may go to 54 and let's continue See you back. All right, I'm making my sample short so that we can get to the main part of the pattern. All right, if you've done your uh, number of loops, this is row one. This is what row one will look like. And I'm going through this so that uh, as you need to ever go back to the tape, you'll know exactly where you are. And you have all your loops. And I have nine loops here, of course. On my original, I have 45. Okay, this is row one. We won't have to repeat this again until um, it'll come another time. But this is row one. It is the wrong side. And we're going to just, after you do the last chain three and a single crochet, now I'm ready for row two. So I simply want to chain three, one, two, and three, turn the work. Just simply turn the work, and now we are on row two. We're working back this direction, and it is the right side. We will mark this, but let's get a little more done before we do that. So, row two, I've chained three and turned the work. The first thing I'm going to do in this first space here is work a three double, three double crochet cluster stitch. And you simply uh, yarn over. Go through the loop, pull up a loop on the hook, stop, now go through two, stop, yarn over, go back, pull up another loop, pull through two loops, stop, one more, go through, pull up a loop, go through two loops, stop. I have four loops on the hook to make a three double crochet cluster now go through all four loops and you're done see easy now chain five one two three four and five all right now I need you to single crochet in the next space right here just do a single crochet see now, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. See that? In the next space here, we're going to do the three double crochet cluster again. So let's go. Yarn over, go through the large loop, pull up a loop pull through two loops stop yarn over go through pull up a loop go through two loops stop okay one more we only have three we need four yarn over go through pull up a loop go through two loops stop I have four loops on my hook pull through all four Okay, now you see the next 
the name of this pattern is called Tilting Twins. Tilting Twins. So in the very next loop, we're going to do another three double crochet cluster so that they're always two clusters right together. They're twins. So yarn over, let's go yarn over, go through the large loop, pull up, pull through two loops, stop. Ooh, my little ball don't want to cooperate today. Okay, let's again, yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. I have three, but I need one more, I need four. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, go through two, now I have four loops on my hook, one, two, three, four, pull through all four, and there's my tilting twins. Can you see them? Okay, from that point, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now in the next loop, we're going to do a single crochet. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we're going back and we're going to take these two loops and make them tilting twins. We're going to do the three double crochet cluster in this one and in this one. So let's go. See if you can get a flow here. So yarn over, go through the first loop, pull up a loop, go through two. Stop, yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, stop. I've got three, one more. Yarn over, go through two, now I have four, one, two, three, four, go through all four, and we're going to go ahead and put one right next to it. Yarn over, no, no chain or anything in between, just go right into it. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, stop, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop, yarn over, Go through, pull up a loop, go through two. I have four loops on my hook, pull through all four. Now, can you see my crazy ball of yarn? Can you see that we are working like a trellis? Then the two twins, the two clusters, right together, and then the next two. And this helped me to kind of keep in pattern. On each side of the cluster, the two clusters, I always chain five. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five. That just helped me to kind of stay in the rhythm. All right. The next loop, what are we going to do? A single crochet. Now, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And this very last loop, I'm going to do the cluster one more time. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two loops, stop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. I need one more. Yarn over, pull through two loops, and stop. I have four loops on my hook, pull through all four. See that? Now, there's a single crochet right here on the end, and we're going to simply do a double crochet in this last single crochet. So you just find that single crochet and do a double crochet. And that is how row two, the right side, will look. You will have clusters with chain fives in between. Can you see that? Because once we get into the rhythm a little later, you're going to kind of use the uh, right side. No, row two is our right side clusters and chain five. Okay. Now, the next row and the last row we have to do is row three. Now, to get to row three, we simply need to chain one at the end, 
and turn the work. This is row three. Now we're back on the wrong side. Chain one, turn the work. Now single crochet in that very same stitch that you just made. And right there, just single crochet back into that stitch. Okay. Now, this is an easy one. Chain three. One, two, three. And all we're going to do now is make that bridge where we're going to simply chain three, single crochet. So in the next large space, do a single crochet. Now chain three. One, two, three. All right. Go to the next large space. Do a single crochet. Chain three. One, two, three. Now this is the part that you need to take care to look at. Here are my two clusters, my twin clusters right there. And if you pull them apart a little bit, you see there's a little space right there at the top. Okay, we're going to single crochet in that space. In that tiny little space. Single crochet. Now chain three. One, two, three. Move on to the next large space. Single crochet. Now chain three. One, two, three. Move to the next large space, single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. I'm up to the next cluster, the twin clusters, and if you pull them apart just a little bit at the top, I'm holding it up so you can see the space between them. Go right into that space, do a single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. And we're going all the way to the end. In the next space, single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. All right, I'm coming up to the last space. I will single crochet, okay, and chain three. One, two, three. Now, right here, there's that post, that double crochet that we made on the previous row. You're just simply going to do a single crochet into the post. Chain three, one, two, uh, well, single crochet into the post and then chain three. Let me just pull it out, make sure I, you saw what I did. Okay. Okay, I chain three. There's that post. I single crochet first into the post. Now chain three. One, two, three. Turn the work and we're back on row two. Now we only have to contend with row two and three. Row two is the right side. So this is what I would have you to do on your main piece. You need to stop and take a very, um, something really bright and noticeable. Something that you're going to know right off the bat. Don't be timid. Just get yourself a really something really so that we can mark the back side. We need to be able to mark the front from the back. It's going to be most important. So we just finished. Uh, the chain three is on the wrong side. So that was the row we just finished. So let me just turn that back. Take a yarn needle. Let's see if I have one here. I do. And we're just going to go and we will move this up a little bit further later but I'm just going to go ahead because I want to make sure I did not forget to tell you this. And you just kind of pull it through and it's just for you. Try not to go all the way through to the other side. It, this is just for you to know it, it, as soon as you see the the yarn you will know immediately oh I'm on the back side well that didn't go quite so well like I said we got we're gonna uh, but at least it's marked so when I chain three and turn now I am back on the front and I'm getting ready to do row two again and I'm gonna go back through row two because Okay, we chain three and turn, and here you go. In this first space right there, you're going to do a cluster. 
So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. Stop, yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. Stop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and go through two. Now I have four loops on my hook. Pull through all four. Okay. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, you see this? See that nice V-stitch that was made on the previous row right here? You're going to do a single crochet. Chain five. One, two, three, four, four and five. Okay. Now you ready? Here are your two clusters right here and they have two large holes right next to them. But it's not those two spaces that we want. If you just move your fingers up you'll see there are two extra spaces that we did the chain three on the row we did on the previous row. You see there and here. This is where we want to stack the new cluster on top of each other. They will stack up, but not in this, these spaces here. But put your fingers right there, and this is how it looks. I've already single crochet chain five. Now my first cluster goes here. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. Stop, yarn over. Oops. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and stop, go through two, and I have four loops on my hook. Pull through all four. Now, immediately, no chain or anything in between, here's the next cluster, here's the space right above the next cluster. Do the exact same thing. Yarn over, pull up a loop, stop, yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, stop. One more yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. I have four loops on my hook, pull through all four. Now you have your clusters stacked on top of each other. And you're going to eventually have these V stitches right here, this V space stacked on top of each other. Okay, as soon as I'm done with the cluster, right before the cluster I chain five, and right after both clusters I chain one, two, three, four, and five. All right, now I'm ready to single crochet in this nice V right there, that nice space. So now I'm simply going to do a single crochet, chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. I'm up to the next cluster group, not in these large spaces here, but if you put your finger right there, you see there's two spaces. So let's go. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two. I have four loops on my hook. And pull through all four. Now I'm ready for this cluster. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, go through two. Yarn over, go through the loop, pull up a loop. Go through two, stop, one more. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, have four, and pull through all four. Chain five, one, two, three, oops, three, four, and five. All right, there's that nice space that, that forms that V right there, so I single crochet. Chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. I'm down to the last loop, and it's right above a cluster, so guess what? We have to make a cluster. And the cluster, again, is yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, go through two, stop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, stop. One more. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, I have four loops on my hook again. Go through all four. Stop. And how do we finish? You have to do a double crochet. There is a single crochet right here. So you will simply just simply do a double crochet to end. To end row two, which is the right side. 
Now, again, we're ready for the wrong side. Okay, the wrong side, which is row number three, again, chain one, turn the work, single crochet in that very first stitch you just made, right there. Just go right back into that stitch and do a single crochet. Now, chain three. One, two, three. Now we're just going to work across in all the spaces. So single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. Go to the next large space, single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. And we get to the cluster, and I'm going to open them up again so that you can see there's a little space at the top. Single crochet, chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet in the next space, one, two, three. Go to the next space, single crochet, one, two, three. Now, between the two clusters, there we go. Single crochet, one, two, three. In the large space, single crochet, one, two, three. The last large space, single crochet, one, oops, one, two, three. And then single crochet into the post. And that is it. Chain three, one, two, three. Turn the work and you are ready for the right side and row two. And that's our pattern repeat. Now, I hope I did not make a mistake and choose the, such a bad yarn that you can't see it. But you can see things start to line up. Stack up is what I call it. You see these are stacked on the sides. You have these V spaces there and you have the clusters the twin clusters right on top of each other is that how does that look okay well you have a long <laughs> you have quite a few loops you've got to fill up and all you have to do is repeat row uh, two and three now i suggest i didn't do a good job so i'm going to do this again and I suggest you really, because this will help you. I don't know what I did. Oh, there it is. This is really what we're going to need. So take a nice bright, I can say something really bright and different than the yarn, than the color you're going to use. I'm just going to make sure you'll see. Because once we start this, this is how you're going to tell which side you're on. Because it all gets to looking the same after a while. So you might want to just run it up, make sure you're on the, oh, I need a longer piece. Let me get a longer piece for you, because I really want you to get, oh, here it is. Here's a piece. Okay. And I just run it up somewhere so that it stays on the back side. You really want to see it on this side. You're not really wanting to see it on the front side. You want to know it instantly when you see the red yarn, a pink yarn, a bright yellow, or whatever you're going to use to make it stand out. And then sometimes I'll even do this. I'll go ahead and just tie it, not tight, not to pull anything, because we'll cut it off later. You just want to make sure it stays in place on the back side. Every time now, I know on this side is simply uh, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single. And on the right side, I'm going to do the clusters, chain five, cluster, chain five. See how easy that is? Well, see you back in a little bit. Keep going. You're going to like this. It's really a pretty lace. Okay, before we... Uh, before we get to the neck edge, I brought back my uh, real shawl, real poncho, whatever we want to call it, wrap. And I wanted to let you know how many how many rows it 
you know, that I uh, did that I felt like it fit me really, you know, the length I wanted. So starting at, uh, you know, where I started, where I, uh, my first row, I just counted and I counted 18. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I counted 18, 17, 18. So I did mine for 18 rows. Counting uh, the clusters. So now that's, you know, depend on how many rows you need. You may be, well, probably a lot taller than I am, so. <laughs> but write that number down because you have, we're getting ready to go up to the neck and, uh, and then go down the back. So we need to make it match on each side. Now, as I came to the end, I wanted to end on a wrong side row. I wanted to end on row three where I would do uh, the chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. So let me get out, oops, I touch the camera. Let me get out the sample and be sure to write down once you have crocheted. So in other words, this is just my sample, of course. You're going to just continue with this, what we've been doing, row two and three. Row two is the front side, and uh, row three, we've put, we've marked it. That's the back. That's simply where you're going to do the uh, chain three, single crochet, chain three. All right, so you will, I counted, I did 18 because I, for my length. And that would bring me from where I, you know, wanted it to, uh, you know, my waist or whatever, up to the top of my shoulder. 18 these little repeats these rows okay so now here we go so now of course i'm just this is just my sample okay so now i've i've reached the i reached the number of rows that i wanted say so now i'm on the back side because right away i don't have to try to figure out what row because i've got it marked this is why it's so important use something really contrasting and bright so you'll always know and this is the side that I simply chain three and then I do the single crochet then chain one two three go to the next large space single crochet one two three go to the next space single crochet one two three Let me give me some yarn here Okay, I'm up between the two clusters. There's a little space right at the top there. Okay, single crochet. One, two, three. I'm coming up to the end, and this is the row that I want to end on. One, two, three. Single crochet. One, two, three. And then I have to go into the post or that last double crochet just make an entry there single crochet let me do it again single crochet oops need two strand there we go just single crochet there now we're like I said, i'm pretending that i've got to where the length that i want and this is we're saying this is the front i have the back side of the front marked all right what i want you to do is pull up a long loop And just go ahead and snip your, just cut your yarn. Because you've got it to the length you want. Like I said, I did 18. Now, this is the end where we stopped. Here's the end where we started the chain, where we started. And that's where we want to go. So I simply flip this over to the front side with the, you can tell it's where we started because I had all this chain left. Remember that? see that so I know that's where I started my chain when I started the piece in the beginning and this is where we're gonna add on make our neck and go to the other side and then continue on in that direction so let's just take a look have a look at how I came up with how to um, work this uh, neck opening all right so We'll just go right over here to whatever stitch at the very beginning. We'll 
make our loop, our slip knot, just like you would add to if you were adding a granny square, if you were working, if you were doing an afghan or anything else. You just make that slip knot and and all right. Now what we're gonna do is first of all, okay, we're gonna reestablish this pattern. We're gonna look, and we're simply gonna just stack things on top of things and this is the front side so I know it's row two and so row two would start with a chain three so I come over here I've attached my yarn with a little slip knot or however you do yours chain three one two and three okay and the first thing I have is this large space and there is a cluster right up under that space so I'm going to get right back in pattern, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through two loops, stop. Back in pattern on for row two, yarn over. Pull up a loop, go through two loops, stop. One more, yarn over, go through, pull through two loops, stop. Now I have four chains on my hook. I pull through all four. All right. Now, on row two, we chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then I come to this space. So I am going to single crochet there. Just as we were doing it on the bottom. Now chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, the next place I have those two um, clusters. Remember the twin clusters. And it's the little space right above it. See there? There's two spaces there too. So I'm going to put a cluster starting here. It's a little loose, but that's okay. We're still in pattern. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, go through two. Yarn over, go through, pull through two. I have four loops on the hook. Pull through all four. Now immediately I go right into the next space, which will put me above the next cluster. Can you see it? Okay. And I make the cluster again. Yarn over. Go through two, stop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go through two, one more, yarn over, pull up a loop and go through two, stop. Four loops on the hook, go through all four. Okay, so now, oh, okay. Now, on my sample, of course, I don't have much room. You're gonna, you'll have a lot more room. What I want you to do on my original Maybe I better bring it up and show you what I, kind of what I did here. Let me just stop for a second. Okay, on my original, once I got up to, um, it's kind of hard to see with this dark. Let me see, can I do it this way? Okay. Once I got up to where I wanted my, I know I had enough rows and I want to start my neck. Okay. All right. I counted over, first of all. How many repeats did I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I counted over six from this, from the opposite edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I saw that it left me uh, one, two, three, four. Let me make sure how many I had. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I had four, one, two, three, four. I had four repeats for my neck. Now you can have less or you can have more, but the more you have, of course, the, you know, the neck opening is going to be awful large, even though we will put a, uh, some stitches around the neck edge. But just for instance, on mine, I had one from the edge, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting in six uh, complete repeats to represent one side or what the left side or the right side at my shoulder so on the practice of course i don't have that many so i guess i need to show you this okay so i'm gonna count in one two one two okay i'm counting in two and i'm going to this that row of v stitches right there on each side one two and then this row of v stitches so what you can do you can take a marker and mark so we'll know Let's see so it'll be right here 
starting here, I've got to figure out my neck opening. Does that make sense? I think if I stand up, I can do it a little better. Okay, so I go back up here, and I'm working along, and I just finished. Let's see. I just did the two clusters, and I'm getting ready to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Stand in pattern, remember? Okay, now I'm up to the V-stitch where I would simply do a single crochet. All right. I would do a single crochet there. Now, you get to that point, and then let's stop, and then I'm going to walk you through the next uh, step. I just want to make sure my camera don't run out. Okay, now we're getting ready to figure out how to make the opening, how many chains to make for the opening of the neck, and then finish out the pattern. All right, we place two markers. This one wasn't, I hope you can see it. That was the only one I had. Okay, we have two markers. And the markers went right, after I counted over an even number from each side, I, I used six, six repeats across from each side, and whatever was left, however many of these, and I had four left, I'm making that my neck area. On this sample, I only have two in from this side and two in from this side. And I stopped right where the row of V, can you see those little V opening spaces right there? So I put a, mark, a marker there to represent. That's where my neck is going to start here. And then on this side, you see those V spaces right there. I put another marker. So that's where my neck will go. That's where the, I have to add the other stitches back to the back side so that I can have a neck opening. So that it's all in one piece. Remember I promised one piece. <laughs> okay. And this is how we're going to do it. Alright. I've been in pattern. I, chain, I did my five, chain five. I did the two clusters. You see the two twin clusters and then I chain five and now I'm in that V stitch. Right there where I marked that row. All right. Now, right here in the same, counting that V stitch, I want you to count how many loops do you have? Big loops. I have one. I have two. See my finger in there? I have three. I have four. I have five. I have six. And over to the next marker, I have seven loops, seven holes that I can actually put my finger through. From one side to the next, starting in the V-stitch. And if you remember, maybe you don't, but I remember. <laughs> okay. These loops were three, were chain three apiece. They were done on the back side, and each one of these loops, it was a chain three single crochet. Chain three single crochet. Are we on the same page? Okay, so if I have seven loops... And each one of those loops are three chain. Three times seven is 21. So I need to add 21 chain, just for this practice now, to get to the other side, which will represent my neck. So before, let's do it on the practice, and then we'll go over the real numbers. Okay, so I just, I just stayed in pattern, and I got to the V-stitch that I need to get to, and I did a single crochet right there. So now I'm right here, and I'm going to start chaining from here over to the next marker. We've already established seven loops. Three times seven, because there's three chains in each loop. Three times seven is 21, so let's count. And don't make them tight. Make them nice and loose. One, just real loose. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Real loose. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 
Now, there is the back of the neck. And it's going to go over here to where I have this marker. I'm sorry, it's blue. But hopefully you can see it. You see that marker? And you see the space right above the marker. Represents that V. That's where I'm going to connect this, these uh, chain stitches. I'm just simply going to do a single crochet in that space. Okay. Now we're back in pattern. We're on the front side because I don't have that that yarn so I know I'm gonna simply go one two three four and five now I'm ready let me sit back down here now now I'm back in pattern and now if you look I'm right above two clusters so now I go back and yarn over pull up a loop pull through two yarn over pull up a loop pull through two yarn over Pull up a loop, pull through two. I have four loops on my hook. One, two, three, four. And pull through four. All right, here's the next cluster. Remember, they were twins. So, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. One more. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. And now I have four loops on the hook. And I go through all four. And of course I chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, remember I do a single crochet in that V stitch. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And if you look, there's a cluster at the very end. So I'm going to simply yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, Pull up a loop, go through two, stop, one more. I'm doing the cluster, pull through two. I have four on the hook, pull through all four. And I end this row with a double crochet. But you see how that's where I where we started the chain and it's kind of loose. I would go down into the next. I just want it nice and tight. So I would just simply do a double crochet wherever I could get it and Make sure it's nice and uh, that it fits really nice and snug. So I do my double crochet there. And now, look, now we have a neck. So we're about to go to the back, row three. You simply chain one, remember, turn the work. And you can see right away. Now we know we're on the back side. That's why it's important to mark that and mark it nice and bright and bold. Okay, we chain one, um, and we turn the work. Now, we're going to single crochet right back in that very first stitch we just made. So, just single crochet. And just single crochet, just like that. Now, chain three. One, two, three. Now, we're back. And this side, remember, is the real simple side. You just single crochet and chain three. One, two, three. In the next large space, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three. Okay, now we come to those uh, twin clusters, pull them apart a little bit, and that little space at the top, single crochet, and then one, two, three. Move to the next large space, right, one, right there. One, two, three. Now we are at the new, the chain we just made to do our neck. And what I want you to do is to turn your chain so that it's facing you, so it's facing front, not with the bumps on the back. You're looking at it from the front. All right. And where we first started the chain, not way over here somewhere, right here where we started it. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the third chain, just like when we first started, do a single crochet and chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains, one, two. The next chain, do a single crochet and chain three. One, two, three. Okay, let's move on. Skip two chains, one, two, in the third chain. Do a single crochet and then chain three. One, two, 
three. Single crochet, uh, excuse me, skip two chain. One, I don't know where I've, I'm getting ahead of myself. One, two, <laughs> put a single crochet in the third one, chain three. One, one, two, three. Okay, let me get me some yarn here. I do this late at night because it's real quiet and I, seems like I can think better. In the daytime, I get distracted, but then, of course, by the time I do it, I'm, you know, it's late and I, you get tired. So, skip two, one, two, I'm in the third chain, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains, one, okay, one, two, in the third chain. Now, let's go back and count and see where we started. And we're going to count our, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Remember, we had seven chains, three times seven was 21, so we should make, so now at this, oh, chain, uh, single crochet, now chain three, one, two, three, and I don't care how many chains, just go ahead and, now we'll just go ahead and connect it. Let's see, let's just go ahead and connect it. You connect it right here in the last chain that we added. So you should have seven loops. Let's go back and check. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven loops. Okay. Now. Chain three, one, two, three, and you're ready to go in between those two clusters. See that? Chain three, one, two, three, and you're ready to single crochet in the next space. They should match on each side. You should have a little space right above each cluster. And you should have seven loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Can you see that? Does that make sense? Let's just go ahead and go to the end. Okay. Uh, chain three. One, two, three. Go to the next space, chain three. I mean, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three. And you're gonna single crochet in that post, in the last post. Just make an opening somewhere in that post. Single crochet. Okay. All right. Now, we are on getting ready to go to the right side and that which will be row two, so you chain three, one, two, three, turn the work, and now we should get back in pattern, and we should fill in these extra loops as we go across, so let's see how it looks, and then uh, we'll stop, and then I'll go to the original, but let's go ahead so that you can actually see it. So remember, after you chain three, the first thing you want to do, there's a right above that there's a cluster, so right above there is this large opening, so I'm going to put a cluster. Yarn over. You have the drill. Have it down by now. You need four loops. Go through two. Stop. There's four loops. Pull through all four. Okay, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Single crochet here. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now, here are the two clusters, but not in these two large holes. There should be two smaller holes right above each one. Got it down. Okay, let's go ahead and line our clusters up then. Go through, and you should have four loops on the hook. Pull through all four. The next cluster. One, 
one more. Pull through all four. Okay, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, we should go into the first loop right here. Single crochet. Right there. Now, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Should have made a V stitch right above that V stitch. Okay, let's go. Let's see what, see if we have it. I hope I came out right. Okay, so the next two cut. In fact, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna count it out just to see. I have a the next two clusters. Two clusters, a single crochet, two clusters, a single crochet, and then a cluster. Okay. All these loops get to look alike after a while, folks. <laughs> okay, so I did two clusters, chain five, single crochet. Now you watch. Now I need a cluster here. You got the, you know what a cluster is now. You need four loops on the hook. Okay, see, one, two, three, four. All right, pull through all four. And then immediately, the next one, so that they're twins, they're right next to each other, I do another cluster. Okay, now. What do we do? Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, the next large space, I single crochet. Now chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. The next two spaces right there, I'm going to add two clusters. One here. In this space right there. One more. All right, now the now the twin right next to it in the next large space. Okay, one, two, three, four, pull through all four. All right, we're getting to the end. All right, um, chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, and a single crochet right there. Chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, I'm looking now, I have the I have the twin clusters and I'm looking for the little spaces right above them. Not the large ones, but the little spaces right above them, those little openings. Because I'm going to line two clusters right. I'm going to stack them right on top. So let's go. Cluster there. Same thing. Run over, pull through two. Run over, pull through two. Four loops on the hook. One, two, three, four. Pull through all four. Now I need a cluster on top of this cluster. So, yarn over. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more, yarn over, pull through two. I have four loops on the hook. Pull through all four. Chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And I have a V that V space right there, single crochet and chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, because we're on the front. Okay, and I need one more cluster right here because there's a cluster, and I need to stack a cluster on top of a cluster. So in this last space right there with my finger, here we go. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. One more. Pull 
pull through two. I have four on the hook, pull through all four, okay? And then I do a double crochet. If you look real careful, you'll see there's a single crochet, a stitch there. Just do a double crochet right there. And now we're on the way. Now we need to go to the back side, so we simply uh, chain one, turn the work, and when you get to the back side, simply go back into that same stitch and do a single crochet right there. And now here's the easy side. Chain three, one, two, three. And now you're gonna single crochet in every space, every large space. One, two, three single crochet one two three single crochet in the space right between the two clusters that little tiny space at the top single crochet one two three single crochet here one two three see single crochet here one two three single crochet between the clusters one two two three single crochet in the large space one two three okay single crochet in this space one one two three Single cro crochet here in that little space, that little opening. One, two, three. Single crochet here. Oops. One, two, three. Single crochet here. One, two, three. Okay, let me pull some more yarn. I'm almost, we'll get to this end, and then we're going to go to the original. One, two, three, large space, one, two, three, single crochet there, and then one, two, three, and then right that in that double crochet we made, right there in that post, single crochet just find an opening and single crochet and turn the work you'll chain three and turn the work but we're going to stop so that we can take a look at the original and if you notice look it should you should have something that resembles this where the clusters they're coming this direction now they're going this direction you see how how we switch directions but look, everything lines up. My clusters on the edge, my V stitches, this row of clusters, all of this lines up. And then this, this row of clusters, and it skips open for the neck. And then this row, see how that lines up? And that's what you should have. Now I'm going to hold it up. How does that look? How does that sound? I had a piece a little further along, but... It's really the same as this one, so we'll just stick with So now let me get the original and show you. Let me go back and see what I can show on this one. It's just dark. Now, you should have, you wrote down how many rows, uh, I don't know if that was my camera or not. Let me check the camera before we go any further. Good thing. See, I'm getting better. <laughs> I checked the camera and I, I would have stopped right in the middle of what I was going to say. So now I'm all juiced up again and I'm ready to go. I just laid out the original just one more time. Now I am going, you see here's the neckline. All this little fringe is getting in the way. Okay, now I'm on my way down this side and now I can just continue. Row 2 is the front, row 3 is the back where we have the yarn. And be sure when you when you come on this side... Go ahead and attach, uh, I'll show it on the sample, attach another uh, piece of yarn. But anyway, I had 18 for me, 18 rows, 
So, you will, on this side, you've got to repeat. And you're going to end on row three. So, let me get the, let me get this sample right back because I did a little more work on it. Okay. This is just the mini version. You can see now we have a neckline. We have a neck opening. And you can see how things lined up as I was saying before. Okay. And you will continue on down. Now, as soon as you go to this side, right away, grab up some yarn and tie it in or weave it in for this side. Because it's most important that you always know that you're on the front and when you're on the back. On the front, it's the cluster, chain five. On the back, it's the single crochet, chain three. And you will go all the way down. And when you get to... The same number that you have on the front, same, I had 18, so I need 18 on this side. So now I'm going to end on row 3. And I know that because I've got the yarn that tells me. So all I have to do is remember, single crochet, chain 3, single crochet, chain 1, 2, 3, single crochet, chain one two three and go into the last post that double crochet there single crochet and then of course if you know this is just practice i'd pull up a long loop to stop in fact i think i'll cut some of this off i got strings everywhere okay so now i'm pretending you know this is everything is equal and everything's even so now i can just turn on the right side because I know where my right side is. Uh, I can remove any of these markers. I have my neck opening. Everything lines up. Just take all of that out. Now. Now all you have to do is start weaving in all your ends. And this end. I'll start over here. This is the one where the original chain. Remember? So you should have some chains left. That's why I say don't worry about that. So now you can just simply take your scissors and kind of snip, you know, give yourself uh, three or four inches from where you need to stop. Take a yarn needle and slowly follow the yarn and back out till you get, see, just keep backing out slowly so it won't go into a knot before you're ready. Back it out. Back it out. I might go one more. Let's see. Yeah, I think I can go one more. Then you're going to get to a place where you need to make a knot, you know, to knot it to make sure. So, nope, I think I need to go back through that one. So I just grab my hook, pull it back, pull the yarn back through, just like if you would do. Slowly pull that knot. And then you will, see? And then you'll just weave that in. And you didn't have to worry about counting or do anything like that. Now all these ends have to be weaved in. And you know what? Your, uh, I guess this is a poncho maybe. Instead of more of a wrap. Oh, I guess I'm going to change my name. <laughs> okay, but now you see where your neck goes. Here's your head. It goes right through there. And uh, it's, you can, you don't have to add the little fringe. You can, you don't have to. But this is what I did. Just to reinforce the neck. It's fine like it is. It's ready to go. You end it with lace at the end because you end it on row three. We have uh, the lace here on this end. And so I did let me get, uh, maybe another color yarn just so you could see it. This is what you can do. Around the neck edge, you can do a row of single crochet. Just to kind of, if you feel like, well, I like, it might need to be reinforced. You know, I'm going to wear it. So I went ahead and did that. So you're just going to tie it on. Just like you normally do. Just find a place that maybe over on the side. Oh, I tell you what. Let's pretend like we're in the very back. We'll go to, we'll say this is the very back of the. We'll say this is the very back. Let's find the place on the very back and simply just tie it on. You see that? All I'm doing is going to the center back, see? And just pull it through. Now, I instead of us, I just noticed that a single crochet 
I don't know, it's tight and it's small, like I said, I don't want to have to search and have a hard time looking, finding the stitch. So let's try this. Let's do the extended single crochet. Let's do the extended single crochet to give it just a little more of the double crochet that I don't like the, I don't like the double crochets to end at my neck. So watch. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to connect it. I'm going to chain one. Okay. Let's talk about, as I was saying, my memory card went out. So now I'm back up. <laughs> okay, let's talk about again uh, how to reinforce this neck. And I had suggested you could use a single crochet and just simply go around. Or you can just double crochet and go around a couple of rows. And that's fine. I don't like either one of those. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, Suggest maybe try this. I'm going to try the extended single crochet. It gives more of a lacy look to me than just a single crochet that, you know, just is so small and tight. And then the double crochet is too long and loose. So, all right. Go to the back. What you're going to say is the back of your poncho, whatever this is, we're going to call it. <laughs> okay. And attach as you normally would. You know how you normally would attach your yarn to an afghan or anything else. So I've uh, attached with a slip knot and I've chained two. I just attached in the center where I want it. And I'm going to chain two and I'm calling this the center back. Now, let's simply do, I'm not going to uh, count how many chains and all that. I'm just going to kind of randomly start adding my extended single crochet. And I'm simply going to go uh, oh, in the same stitch you just made the chain in the same stitch go back in and pull up that loop like you're going to do a single crochet and then normally we just go through both but all you have to do is go through the first loop stop reach up grab a loop and go through both loops and that's all there is to it then go into the next chain pull up the loop stop pull through the first loop and then through both loops. And now you're just going to start working your way around. Just kind of feeling your way, putting it wherever you think you might need a stitch. If it's too close, just skip one if you need to. Pull up that loop. Stop. Normally you just simply go through both, but I'm simply going to go through the first loop and then reach up and pull a loop and go through both and you see how easy and see if make sure I'm on the camera right okay I'm going to the next one and when you get to a large uh, space just do it the same oh, work in the chain just work in the chain you know you have to kind of Go through the first loop, stop, pull through both. Then you kind of space it out where you think it might. And when I look at it, I don't see single crochet. I don't even see uh, half double crochet. Once you go all the way around, of course, you're going to work your way all the way around the neck until you come back. And right here, you'll simply attach and chain two if you want to go another round and work another round. I think I did, um, hmm, I may have done three to reinforce my neck. So that's all you're doing. You're just going to do this extended single crochet around. Just kind of adding one, one where you need to in the chain, working in the chain. And it just makes a nice finish. Okay. Okay, now... <coughs> Last thing to do, <laughs> I 
a nice thing to do before you put your poncho on or your wrap on and look pretty. Go to the mall. <laughs> Walk around. Okay, you remember I had bought this big pound bag at Joanne's. Doing some of my pound stuff. You know, it's the no-name stuff. You know, they sell it by the pound. Of course, you get like four or five balls of the same stuff. And you know, I have to use up this yarn. <laughs> so, so happens, it matched. I did, I already had this. And so happens when I start looking around in my yarns to see if I had anything to match. Lo and behold, I had this. Isn't that pretty? Maybe... Maybe, let's see if you can see it like this. Isn't that pretty? It's got a little glitter on there. Well, I just took a uh, old VHS. You know, I keep some old, B, I have some old VH cases. I just kept an old VH case, made my loop, and just simply cut my fringe. You know, the length, snip, and then wherever... I felt working in some of the spaces start kind of maybe in your center back this is the center back because I can see where I I can feel that little knot you know how you when you end everything and sew everything in okay so here's my center back and I just looked at the spaces and I just started and you know how you well I don't want to put this one in there but you know how you uh, add a Add your fringe. Let me do one. I'll take this one out. Okay. So, you know how you line the ends up. Then I just reach my finger. Pull the this part through. Pull the loop through. Like that. Then you stick the tails through the loop and slowly pull. Not too tight at first. And then kind of, and then I went back. I suggest you go back after a while. They'll go back, but you can open them up so that you'll get a little more glitter in the netting. See how pretty that looks? You really have to see this in person. But now you may find some other, if you don't have that, you can find something else that will match your color. And of course, you don't even have to use the hot springs, this purple, deep great purple color you can do yours in another color but when you buy your yarn go ahead and find you one something like this to match well here is the finished product and like i say it's one piece beautiful arm drape beautiful arm drape nice neck because i reinforce and you see if you can't you may not be able to see it because it is so dark on here but when i look at this i don't see single crochet i see a lace border going around my neck because i use the extended single crochet but now you can use single crochet or double crochet if you want to reinforce your neck and you see on this side the pretty lace everything is done there's no blocking or anything just put it on you're ready to go and look pretty well what do you think i hope you've enjoyed this it's a very nice crochet it's fun it is some work the neck take your time go over the tape just take oh this is something i do just so that I, once you start wearing anything you know how you wear a sweater or anything and after a while it takes your form so that I'll always know the back. Yeah, you, know, you may have labels. I don't have any labels. I guess I need to get some. I usually will take a little flat button and put right in, you know, something that's going to match that I won't notice, won't see, but I'll be able to, you know, feel it. And I put that in the center back. So whenever I'm getting ready to put this on, I don't have to like, okay, now which was the front? So I just sew me a little flat button, something of the same color tone. And now I know that this is always the back. And here's my front. And it is so cute. And now look. You can experiment with this. Now you can make your front shorter and your back longer. You know, you could come up. But the idea of this was to do it in one piece. So it's the neck. So steady 
what I showed you how to figure out a nick because we're going to use it again and again and again. <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed this. I am I'm just so excited to bring this next uh, simple crochet project to use our stitch books. Uh, thank you, Darla Sims, for the great uh, pattern idea. And uh, I hope you can get some new books, girl. I hadn't. I, I, I hope you're working on some new books. Because I, I don't know. I, I, you know, like I said, I have a lot. But we have a lot more stitches to do. So, as we come to this end of this project, what else can I say? But go walk around the mall and look pretty. And tell people and smile when people give you great compliments. Because they're going to give you some really great compliments. So, smile and look pretty. And don't forget to tell them, oh, you need to go check out Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam, y'all. <laughs> Until we meet again. I've got, of course, I'm working on something already. So, see ya. See ya.